Good evening. Good evening, Father Sot Digital Church. Good evening, South Africa. Welcome to this call. It is Thursday, the 16th of November. Yes, it is the 16th of, of November. And tonight I have the privilege of hosting you as facilitators and being part of the Father Sot Digital Church, Dr. Frost Bigger Ministry, and helping us to get the word of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ out there. And to thank you for standing in the gap for your community. Thank you for changing the spiritual atmosphere in your community. It's so important that you understand that you are busy changing the spiritual atmosphere in your community. And thank you for, for doing that. Thank you for standing in the gap for your whole community. They don't, <clears throat> sorry, they, not, they don't necessarily understand what you are doing. They don't necessarily understand what, what purpose you fill in your community. But I promise you, that will, it will be revealed because God says it will be revealed. And when God reveals it, people are going to stand in, in awe and say, you know what? Um, I did not understand this, but I have to say they were standing for us and not against us. And sometimes it feels in your community as if some people or members of your community feel as if you're standing against them, but it's, it's not true. Um, because we stand for our community. We want to build into our community. We, we're busy equipping the saints. We're busy preparing the bride. We, we are the church. We're busy being the church. And um, tonight, with a topic that we, that we dealt with, um, and um, allow me to, to start with a scripture. And that was the first scripture that Pastor Les used tonight in this topic, the topic, the process of faith. And this topic of the process of faith is so important for you and I as facilitators. But this, the first scripture that, that Pastor Les read in this uh, topic, and, and this topic, you know that the, the topics are recorded in the, in the books. And that's the first scripture in that topic. And the scripture is Mark 9, verse 23. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Jesus' word. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. And that's tonight, that, in, that encompassed tonight's topic. But it also encompassed what I want to talk to you about tonight. And uh, before we go into my talking, let us just lift up this meeting and commit it to, to God. Lord, in prayer, Lord, we just come and say thank you that we can just come and stand with you. Lord, that we know that we are brothers and sisters. We are the bride. We are the church banding together, standing together to, f to come in, in unity with your word. Lord, so that we can be of one accord. That scripture reminds us that we should be of one accord. And Lord, tonight, as we are as facilitators on the school, as we come in standing together, Lord, you know every name that's on this list. Every name that I can page through, you know, every person that will watch this on the recording, Lord, because you have a purpose, you have a, a, a reason for us being on this call tonight. And Lord, thank you that we can just tonight talk to the to the facilitators with regards to an important topic, and that is the topic of Israel, the topic of us standing together for Israel because it's got such a big influence in the spiritual for the world. And Lord, thank you that we can stand together tonight as believers and that we can say, Lord, come and teach us. Holy Spirit, Lord, come, come and supernaturally help, get our helper, the Holy Spirit, to come and impart into us the love of God for the people, the love of God for the people in our communities. Lord, the love of God for the people of Israel. Lord, so that we can come and we can make a difference in the, in the spiritual atmosphere in our communities. Lord, starting with our household and then our street block and then our community. And Lord, we come and we pray for every person that are standing. And Lord, we pray that they will keep standing. We pray this. We commit this meeting tonight to you, Lord. No person, not a single person to be important, but only you, God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Lord, we come and we pray to you as our Father, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the indwelling Christ. But Lord, we come and we lift up you as the Father. We come and we, we, we pray to the living God, 
the great I am. And we come and we make your name big as if we can, because your name is a name above all names. Lord, tonight we just come and submit this meeting to you and say, Lord, come supernaturally through the help of the Holy Spirit, turn the words to reach every person where they are at at this point in life. In Jesus' name, amen. Cool, let's, um, let's do this. So tonight I would like to talk to you and uh, talk to you about um, this scripture, Mark 9 verse 23, that says, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. The key is, do we believe? And sometimes we have conversations that is not showing that we believe. Sometimes we try and, and by words persuade people that we believe. But if we truly believe, oh, we should never have to use words to persuade people that we believe. Because it will be evident to them. It will, our, our testimony will run ahead of us. The Holy Spirit will run ahead of us. Now this question or this scripture that say, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. This scripture is important for you and I as facilitator. Because a lot of people at some point in their lives question, do I really believe this? I know I'm a Christian. I know I'm, I, I've accepted Jesus Christ. But is it real? Is it? Because sometimes in our lives we just get to a junction. And you heard Pastor Les in the teaching say, you know what? He got to a junction where that was coming up all the time. And he had to, to work through this. And God came through for him in that area. But tonight, I want to raise three questions for us. And I don't want you to put your hand up and answer them. I want, this is rhetorical questions. I don't want you to answer them. I want you to use them and to go into the word and go find the answers for yourself in the word so that you know that you know that you know. Because sometimes we have a blind spot. And we, we believe stuff blindly without knowing that we know it. And when you have a blind spot, the moment that the fire is on in that area, all of a sudden, you know what? My knees are weak. I'm not standing. First question that I, and this is just open questions that I pose to myself and to you tonight as facilitators. Do you believe that God is the living God? Do you believe that God is the living God? the creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe that with all your heart? Do you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you? Do you believe that Jesus Christ had you in mind when he endured the cross? Third question, do you believe that the Holy Spirit is sent to be the indwelling Christ, one of the same sort as Jesus Christ, to be your helper, for you to bear the fruit for you to have the power, for you to be able to go and do. And this topic tonight about the topic, the process of faith, is such an important topic for you and I as facilitator. The topic covers answers to a number of questions that bubble up in home fellowship in, inevitably. It will, it will bubble up in your home fellowship at, at some time. There's always someone that, that have a question with regards to, do we believe? Do we actually have the faith to believe this? And it, it will happen. And as part of being a facilitator, and as part, as, as part of this um, ministry, the Father's Heart Digital Church Ministry, combined with a bigger Dr. Frost National Ministry, and um, it's not restricted to members of Father's Heart Digital Church at all, but it's open to, to any person nationally to have a home fellowship. And we have various other ministries that use our home fellowship model. And we have no prob problem with that, that, use our topics in their home fellowship, because at least we know that they get, that they get the word. So it's not, it's not restricted. It's open. But the key is, are you and I, are we open? What do we do when we get someone questioning their faith? Because I need to make sure that I take tonight's teaching and go through this week and prayerfully just go revisit the scriptures, just go revisit this, this topic to answer the questions with regards to faith for myself. So that when it bubbles up, I don't get thrown. But 
I'm sure. We have to make sure that we're sure. We have to make sure that we're not doing this to, to get someone's praise or to be in with the in crowd or to be whatever. I don't care if I'm in, if I'm in the in crowd. I, I only care if I'm in the spiritual crowd, if I'm grounded in Christ. Now, remember, we as a ministry with Dr. Frost, uh, Dr. Frost National Ministry, we all, we are all geared, everyone involved in the ministry, we are all geared to equip the saints to become diligent followers of Christ with the fruit of the Spirit present, visibly present, with the fruit of the Spirit present. Because through the presence of the fruit of the Spirit in my life, as I operate, as you operate, as we operate as, as the church, under the anointing of the power of the Holy Spirit, our testimony, our witness will run supernaturally ahead of us and it will pro provide healing to people. It will provide provision. It will heal and it will provide. And, and we will make a difference in our areas because we're in a spiritual battle. We are in the midst of a spiritual ba battle. I trust that um, on that fact that we're in a spiritual battle, I trust that some of you joined the 21 day fast that we busy with since the 11th of November till the 12th of uh, 1st of December, 11th of November till the 1st of December, which is 21 days. The 21 days they fast that was called by the prophets in the USA, um, in the bigger Cindy, Jake, uh, Cindy um, Jacobs ministry. And um, th the key is, if you, if you join this fast, and if you're part of this fast, if you already joined this fast, it's great. Remember, I'm not doing the fast so that I can tell people that I fast. I haven't told any person yet that I'm, that I'm part of this fast, so you don't know if I am, because I haven't told you that I participate in this fast. Because it's not about telling people and having a sour face and look as if you're baptized in lemon juice because you're part of a fast. The key is to be part of the fast so that I continually throughout the day get reminded by what I sacrifice, to get reminded to press in, to press in with the Father, to make sure that I use that time. If I, if I fast social media or TV or sport or whatever I fast, if I'm not doing that for this time, in, in that time that I would have done that, I use that time to press in with the Father. And the Holy Spirit will remind me every time that I have the unction to go do that. Oh, I'm not doing it now. Let's, let's press in with the Father. And that's part of participate, participating in this fast. And this fast is all about changing the spiritual atmosphere. Now, we as a, as a ministry and you as the facilitators, and that's why I talked to you about tonight, because you are implementing this at ground level. Dr. Frost can give it out there. If no one receives it and take action and go and implement it, nothing will happen. There will be no change in the spiritual atmosphere over South Africa. And the key is that we need you as facilitators, as our, as our hands and feet on the ground in the area that you are, to actually go and do, to stand at this point, to impact, to impact the people. Remember, Joining this fast or not joining the fast will not impact your salvation. But joining the fast will align your spirit with those who are participating in the fast in praying for Israel and in releasing Psalm 91 over your area, over your family, to make sure that you control the spiritual atmosphere, that you raise an altar of worship in your area, that you, the higher altar always wins. The highest authority wins so that you know that you change the spiritual atmosphere over, over your area. Now, tonight, I would like to refer to, and I trust that most of you already watched the video that Dr. Frost released earlier today on, on his Facebook page and through the WhatsApp group on Telegram. And um, the video that's, that's called the November 2023 update, the November 2023 update, because that video Dr. Frost made today and released today after, sorry, after he returned back from the USA from, from being part of this three-day event. 
where they actually looked at what the prophets are saying and um, uh, see where we're going as the bigger ministry, not Father's Heart, not the Dr. Frost ministry, the bigger ministry, all ministries combined in the world that's standing. Where are we at? Because remember, God reveals His plans to the prophets, and that's happening since the Old Testament. God reveals what He's, what he's going to do. God reveals what's ahead through the prophets. And this is an opportunity for us as a ministry to just go and see what the prophets are saying so that we timelessly can make sure that our ministry is aligned with where God is going. Otherwise, we will just be. We will not have an effect. And that's why it's important to be in one accord, to make sure that we are aligned with where God is taking the work, where God is taking the church. And um, in that video, Dr. Frost uh, reveals that the, from the Acts Church, and this is the part that we know well, the Acts Church is first is spreading the um, Apostle Doctrine and uh, making sure that we read the Bible, making sure that we get in line with the Word of God. Second is um, reading the Word of God, your Bible. So spending time reading, reading the Word of God and... Um, Sorry, uh, second is uh, communion. My apology. Second is communion. Uh, sorry, in, in the Acts Church. My apology. Um, sorry, I'm now. My apology. I'm not there, Makar. I just have to line my thoughts. I'm running ahead. First is the Apostle Doctrine. Second is reading the Word of God, your Bible. Third is fellowship. And third is, fourth is prayer. That's the Acts Church. That's what, that's the foundation of the church. So the church is built on those four pillars, those four foundations in Acts. So the Acts Church was based on those four pillars. And, and what we've done in, in the Father's Heart Digital Church ministry with Home Fellowship is we've taken a little of that and say, but that's what the, the church looked like. But what should we change in that to fit in where the church is moving, where the church is today? Because it, it won't help us to go sit at one day and just stay there and not move on and not move with the time and not be aligned with where the word of God is going. Now, Dr. Frost explains in, in the um, video, explains what happened and what the prophets say about the church. And I'm not going to repeat everything that Dr. Frost said, but it's important that I just mention the, the headlines because it's important for you and I as facilitators. It's important for you and I to know where you and I fit into this huge plan of God, what he revealed to the prophets, to where the church is going as, as, a, as a body, the church, not ministries, the church. And you and I are part of the church. We are the church active in our community. And the prophet said, and it's interesting, they said, read Psalm 91 over your family daily. Now, um, <laughs> we know that we have been doing, it's not something that we're making up. We know that we have been doing this since COVID. We have been reading Psalm 91 daily, 12 o'clock, and we all have alarms. I go, go anywhere, and 12 o'clock, there's alarms going off everywhere. You know who's part of the ministry and who's not. And the key is that we have to read Psalm 91 over our families. And now the prophets say, but we have to read Psalm 91 over your family, but we also have to read Psalm 91 over Israel. Now, that is something that in our ministry was prophetically foreseen and instituted. It's not something that we can say now, like a lot of people will tell you, but you know what? We have been doing it. We have the, the actual proof that we've been doing it because the videos are on the Facebook every day. So the videos are there. It's not something that we now come and tell people that we have done. The prophets now say, we, and don't think those prophets looked at us and decided what to do. <laughs> They're blissfully unaware of what we're doing. They're they pressing in with the Father. So we have been doing that little part, but we want to encourage you. If you're not part of that yet, if you not read Psalm 91 over your family regularly, maybe not every day. Maybe you cannot make it 12 o'clock every day. Maybe you do it at another time. 
Maybe 12 o'clock doesn't fit into your work schedule. We understand that. But make sure that you go and see and read Psalm 91. And understand, I mean, David wrote the psalm and he was, he was a warrior. So this is a psalm that, that takes us into that warrior mode. That's the different spelling of warrior. Then number two, communion every day. Communion every day. Now, <laughs> again, it's something that's not, that's not funny. We, we understand it. Some people, I've just had a, a, a discussion recently with, with a, a, someone in another ministry, and um, he didn't think it's too cool that we're having communion every day because you're making it, making it worthless because you, you participate on a daily basis. That's never what God intended for communion. He said, as, as every time that you participate in it, as regular, every time that we use communion, we should remember this. So again, it's not something that we say we, we now think up today and now we tell you that we're doing it. It is something that we have been doing since the first day of COVID and we now in day 1,200. And I don't know, someone will type in the chat box what their actual number today was. I cannot remember. I specifically listened to the number this morning and I know if I say the number and I try to be specific, I will not get it right and then you're going to laugh at me. But I know there will be someone on the school that know the number off by heart and will cut, chat, put it in the chat box. Thank you. So then the third one that they say is small groups will become the mass gathering. <laughs> Isn't that what we've been saying all along? That's why we have you here, brother and sister, the facilitator. <laughs> That's why we have raised facilitators in a lot of areas. And, and, and I tell you, there are lots of areas in which we still need facilitators. I, I get people that want to be in home fellowships on a regular basis who are in areas where there is absolutely not a facilitator yet. And I have to spend a little bit of time and talk to them and see if I cannot convince them to go and, and ask the Father and go press in with the Holy Spirit and say, Father, is it what I have to do? And some of them take up the mantle and say, you know what, I can do this. And um, I heard from the Holy Spirit that I should do this. And they go and they, they facilitate the home fellowship. But some people just say, you know what, I just want to sit under the facilitator for a little while before I do it myself. And I can understand it. I can fully understand it. But the key is we need more home fellowships because the, the prophets say small groups will become the mass gathering because of a lot of small groups if they're all together of one accord. And what do we do? We have one word every week as we have this word, had this word tonight that, uh, we, that we're talking about. And the key is that we have to make sure that we have one accord. And thank you as facilitators for equipping the saints because home fellowship quickly equip the saints because they get the word of God. They actually receive the word of God. The key is they, they get prayed for. They participate in prayer from those who never prayed for someone. They get the unction to start praying for someone. They, they, they get in there. They're not sure. They don't want to pray, pray. They don't want to participate. But as we pray, as we, as we press in, as they see, as they get the example, they build up their faith to step out the boat and go and pray for people. And then to live, to live the gospel. Because in home fellowship, that's where we influence people to actually live the life of, of a Christian, to live a life that speaks, that have a testimony of the Holy Spirit. Then the, so, and this, so this part we, we do. Not enough. We don't have enough home fellowship yet. We, we wanted to have a thousand by, by now and we're not uh, there yet. Thank you, Tonya. It's day number 1330. So she had to go check it up because it took her a bit of time. But thank you, Tonya. We have it. Day 1330 each day. Dr. Frost, I haven't skipped with a communion. So then the prophet say number four is worship. We have to call in God's presence. We have to walk in God's presence and we attain that through worship. So we have to develop the worship. Now we have an amazing worship team. Wherever Dr. Frost travels, wherever we have a, 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 a big meeting, we take the full um, band with 
the, the worshippers with. And we have amazing equipment. We empowered them with, with amazing sound equipment and stuff so that they can truly, truly just worship. And uh, John and band, they are doing an amazing job and they they s got such an anointing to do this. And, and we we thankful for what they do. But we have to do it more. We have to get in God's presence. And we have to get more time to spend in worship. And I some days just put on worship music and some days it's very loud because in those days I need to hear it. I need, yeah, I need to feel it. Other days it can be quietly in the, in the background. Some days I'm just going to lie. I just lie under the worship. I don't do work while I worship. Some days I work in the work while I'm doing the worship. Some days I just have to lie under the presence of God in the worship. But number four is worship. And number five is equipping the saints to influence people, to get people to be influencers for God. Now, we in this new world, we understand influencers. We have people that are influencers and they, they're very funny because they swear or they're very funny because they, they announce, they pronounce things funny or they speak English with an Afrikaans accent or whatever. Or some people are funny because what? And we call them influencers in this, in this day and age. But you and I, we should be influence, influencers for Jesus Christ. We should be influencers. We should influence the people in positions that's much higher than us. We should get influence within government. We should get influence with people with, with um, authority. We should get influence into, into places where we can make a bigger difference in our communities. We should equip the saints to step into positions of influence, for, to get the action from the Holy Spirit, to go stand for a position of influence. And that's part of, of or number five. And number five is the number of grace. And we need grace to go and do that, uh, that part. But the key is, we as the ministry, we are truly aligned with this. And we, we trust that, that we're hearing from God and that we're pressing in and not trying to impress people, but that we're pressing in what we hear and receive from God, what we, what we find in the scriptures. And that's the important part for you and I to not impress people but to imprint the gospel of Jesus Christ in them. For you and I to make sure that we're not building a legacy, but that we're building the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we equip, we equip the church too, through you as the facilitator, through you as the facilitator. And you and I as the facilitator should see how we see that through you, what do we do? Through you. We equip the church to be equipped to do spiritual warfare over our nation, to step into spiritual warfare for the nation of Israel. And we do that by showing you, by giving you word, by giving you all the teachings, by giving you all the different tools, equipping you. We're not telling you to just follow and to just do as, as we say. We're giving you the tools. We're giving you the word. We, we're building it into you so that you can do it on your own. And there's a number of people that, that were totally part of this ministry and totally running with us. And they, they still running with us, but they now actually a ministry on their own. A lot of people gone and they said, but you know what? I found what I needed. I have the boldness to now go launch and be and do my own ministry. And it's cool. We will not restrict any person going to the ministry. We will say, go, 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 Fatum, because that's what it's about. It's about getting the ministry out there getting the church ready getting the bride of christ ready and thank you to every one of you who's grabbed a hold of this and started home fellowship i know it's stepping out of the boat for for some people some people more than others but the key is we're doing it so you as the facilitator with in home fellowship we actually getting an army ready for spiritual warfare over our nation changing the spiritual atmosphere only in your house, only in your little town, in your little suburb. <laughs> but the spiritual atmosphere, that's that fighting the spiritual atmosphere. We're getting battle ready for a bigger spiritual warfare. Because this is serious at this moment. Number two, we prepare to see the fire of God over our nation. We prepare to see the fire of God over our nation. 
and you as the facilitator in your home fellowship, you're busy building into the people. And that is preparing them to see the fire of God over our nation by making a difference in the spiritual over their household, over their little area. <laughs> Can you see where we're going? And we're calling down the fire of God over our nation and over the nation of Israel. There will be no World War Three prematurely. And we as facilitators, we build that into people because we follow what is happening in this ministry and we we sound the alarm bells and we say, guys, girls, let's let's participate in this fast. Well, let's fast coffee or let's let's fast that coke that you always drink, or let's fast your your takeaways, or let's fast TV, or let's fast sport, or let's whatever, it doesn't matter. Nobody else I need to know. Just so that you have time that you become battle ready. And part of being battle ready is for us to fight for no World War Three prematurely. That's part of the battle. Fighting the battle for that not to happen. We as a body, number four, will have to reverse what the devil plans. And through you as the facilitator, that's what we do. Through what we give you, through the word that we give into you, through the tools that we give you, through being of one accord, from, from, from standing with one another. That is who we have become, not who we're becoming. That is who you have become as facilitator. And I want you to see that. I want you to, you know what, maybe some of you realize tonight, you know what, <laughs> I've become battle ready. And I didn't really understood this. I didn't really realized it. But tonight I want to come and say, well done, saints. <laughs> we are getting the church battle ready. Thank you for every one of you that give in some of your time, some of your energy, some of your effort, prayerfully before the Father, giving in prayer time for the people in your own fellowship, making sure that we raise up an army that is spiritually mature to fight this battle because we're in a battle more than ever. But where do we start? With my household, with my little block that I stay in, with my little community, with my little area. If we just have a facilitator in every area doing exactly the same, what do we do? We change the spiritual atmosphere over our nation. We can pray in a difference in the spiritual atmosphere over Israel. And thank you for every one of you. Tonight, I just actually wanted to come and say, guys, girls, we are so in line. It is so encouraging to see that, you know what, we haven't been off in a tangent. <laughs> and... Uh, not getting battle ready. Yes, we have number one, number two, number three. Number four, we just touched on. Number five, we, we're still short. We need to go work on that. We need to go plan that. But that's, that's part of what God is doing. He's revealing through the prophets what we should do and where we should go. I'm done. I just want to say to you, facilitator, thank you. Well done. Thank you for hearing. Thank you for doing. Because without you, we cannot go change the spiritual atmosphere over this nation. Without the people in your own fellowship, we cannot go and do and change the spiritual atmosphere over this nation. Without us stepping into our communities and making a difference and start being influencers, start getting the gospel out in our communities, the enemy is going to take the position. Let's just pray. Lord, we just come tonight and say, thank you, Lord. That what the prophets revealed, where the church, where us, as the bride should go, that we on our way, that we busy with that path. But Lord, where we short, help us, help us supernaturally so that we can see what we should do. Lord, help us to be battle ready. Lord, I want to come tonight and lift every facilitator that's busy preparing the army, lift them up before you, Lord. And say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for people that are willing to do, willing to fight the battle, willing to step in, willing to give of themselves, willing to make a difference, willing to make sure that we push back the enemy. Lord, we just come tonight and we want to worship you.
We say, Lord, we acknowledge you as the great I am. We acknowledge you as our creator, as our, as our provider, as the one who's the name above all names. Tonight we just come and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you that we can be in the front lines of this battle. Thank you that we can help in raising up an army. Thank you. But Lord, help us that we will see that being battle ready means that we should spend the time on our knees. We should spend the time talking to you. We should, we should make the time praying, making sure that we hear every person for ourselves, Lord. Every person in this time. Lord, I thank you for every facilitator that's busy listening, pressing into you, hearing from the ancient, getting an unction from the Holy Spirit for someone in their home fellowship, someone that's searching, someone that's yearning. Lord, thank you for the teaching tonight that we can have that as one of our battle-ready tools to go and help assist people to stand, to, to understand their level of faith, to understand faith, the path of faith. Lord, I pray this tonight. I bless every facilitator, every person who's thinking of facilitating, every person who's just a member of our own fellowship. It doesn't matter, Lord. Any person that hears this message, we come and we lift them up before we, before you and we bless them with your name, with your love, with your anointing to go and make a difference and be battle ready. We pray this in the wonderful, matchless, anointed name of Christ Jesus. Amen. It's an absolute privilege serving you.